Welcome to Shadow of Truth, and today is Monday, September the 19th, 2016, and your hosts are Rory Hall from the dailycoin.org and Dave Kranzler from investmentresearchdynamics.com, and this is our Monday market update, and we certainly appreciate everybody being here. And uh, and the uh, censorship that that is that we're seeing now is going to get. It's only going to get worse. It's not going to get. Oh, better. it definitely is. I mean, that's what kills me about the whole thing. Is like, well, first of all, you know, we were victimized by their censorship before it even came out that they were censoring. Well, see, but that, and that's that's a whole nother thing. Is is that that's the new norm, Dave. You know, we implement right. a policy, we we roll it out. It's just like a- everything else from government to corporations. They do all these things. And then they say, oh, yeah, by the way, in the rearview mirror three weeks ago, you'll see that everything changed. Right. What's amazing about it is that everyone in this country points their finger at China and says, oh, look at China. They're they're censoring their their Internet. And it's like, how is that any different from what's happening over here? Exactly. It's no difference. I mean, YouTube cuts us off of monetization from like three or four of our podcasts because they don't like our, the title of our podcast. Right. <laughs> and that's not censorship? That is how is censorship. that different than what China does? There's no difference. No difference at all. And speaking you know, of and China, got, at CNN, it's like they cut out anything that ha- could potentially be even remotely negative about Hillary Clinton. They fire a guy who questions her health, a longtime health expert on their show, who you know made a lot of money for himself and for the network with his stupid health show, exactly. and they fire him because he's questioning Hillary's health. Apparently, he was told not to. Can't Does have that. that. Than what happens in China? It's it's no different. I mean, and and here's. This morning, I don't know if you saw or not, uh, but there was almost the exact same article released on Bloomberg and Telegraph. Telegraph is Eurocentric. Bloomberg. Yeah, Telegraph UK. Telegraph UK. Yeah, it's and, one of the better publications out there. Well, then that's why I was kind of surprised at this because it's a, it's a flat out hit piece, and it's and and Ambrose Ev- Evans Pritchard, who I have a great deal of respect for wrote this piece and there was this obviously mockingbird operation mockingbird uh parrot parroting done by bloomberg so you've got both sides of the atlantic coming out talking about uh this the bis is is saying that china's economy is is imploding and it's like and they go through you know the gdp and china's raised their uh debt by 107 percent over the last eight years and it's like when i and when i read that it was like wait a minute something's wrong here let's let's look at uh, let's look at obottom and what he's done and in less than eight years he's almost doubled which is basically a hundred percent the uh debt here so what's the difference and that's and that's the question it's like okay why is this coming out right now on both sides of the Atlantic at the same time on the same day. And it's like, oh yeah, this is to keep any anybody thinking about investing in China because of the, the change with the SDR that's coming up at the end of the month, because of the yuan being added to the basket of currencies, all of these things. So we'll start the attacks early and often. And it's like, that's that's the only thing that makes sense to me. So that's 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 what it's tied to. It's tied to the fact that the yuan is coming out as part of the SDR. That's exactly what it's targeting. Yep. And it's it's tar- You know, I'll tell you the thing about AEP. Ambrose Evans Pritchard. He he used to write objectively, especially during the Bush administrative years. He would write objectively about the precious metals. He'd even touch on, I mean, he wouldn't come out and acknowledge manipulation, but he, he'd dance around it. You know, he's the only guy in the mainstream media that would dance around it and yep. acknowledge that it, you know, it, it could be there. And he would write objectively about economic issues. And something happened in the last, I don't know, four or five years, someone got a hold of him 
and read him the riot act. And I haven't read him in years just because he's, he's turned into just another mainstream media monster. And it, so it's not, it's just a waste of time. So it doesn't surprise me that, uh, you tell me that he, that he's published a hit job on China. I, I mean, if anything, it's, it's, again, it, it gets back to the principle that I've devised where if you see something in the mainstream media where they make some sort of assertion, it's probably the opposite is actually probably the truth. Right. That's exactly <laughs> it. And that's my stance, Dave, is, is 180 degrees. If they say it's night, I'm looking out the window to, to confirm that the sun has gone down. Because that's right. And it, it, that's, it's, a, that's a good rule to live by when you're dealing with mainstream media. Because they just they're they're so dishonest at this point. I mean, they're they're everything that they say is is a hundred percent scripted. If it's not a hundred percent scripted, it's in the it's in the seventy plus category. Oh Maybe yeah, it's got to be because well, this this is a true story. Uh, I've got a colleague who I've known for a long time, and he's a little bit older than us, and he has a very good friend who was had been a long time writer for the Wall Street Journal and they had got together for lunch about a year ago maybe it was 18 months ago and the guy told my colleague he said I just want to let you know I'm 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 retiring from the Wall Street Journal and then he proceeded to spill his guts about what's happened there and he said it it's just gotten to the point where anything I submit to the editors it gets it gets reconfigured so that it's it's they 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 change it about ninety percent of the content of my articles and he goes I can't I can't have that anymore and you know and that's what's happened I mean yep. and what kills me is that a lot of people off you know they reference the New York Times or the Washington Post or the Wall Street Journal or Barrons as authorities and if it's if it's in those publications it's got to be true and it's not it's not it's not that way anymore I mean those. Those publications have been destroyed. I mean, just asked Paul Craig Roberts about the Wall Street Journal. He used to sit on the editorial board. Yeah, I mean, they've, they've been bought out. I mean, and what, what most people don't know or understand is that Operation Mockingbird, which is an actual CIA operation that started in 1954, is still alive and well. And they right. have been paying journalists. So they started out here in the United States, you know, with all of the, the really like CBS, those news anchors and so forth. And then they just work their way down, down the ladder. And now it's, it's gone globally. I mean, it's, they're everywhere there. They are, they have bought journalists everywhere. I mean, and there was, it got to the point to where there was a comment made a few years ago from one of the ranking officials within the CIA saying that I can get hookers cheaper. I can get journalists cheaper than I can get hookers. I mean, <laughs> That's right. I read about that. That's that. That's that um, operation where they figured out that whatever headline hit the press first, whether it was correct or not, was was what the people believed to be the truth. Yep. So, and it, it started, I think, during. I want to. Didn't it start during the McCarthy era? I think Nin- nineteen fifty four. It was, and it's called Operation Mockingbird. That's right. What it's called. I, I thought it was started during the McCarthy era to help to help aid the the crackdown on communists, but I, right. I I can't remember what the it was it was devised specifically for something, and then it just went into full blown policy. So it and it's like that's why whenever a bomb goes off in this country, or you know even if there's a, a trash can fire in a city street somewhere, you know. Someone comes out and says, oh, ISIS did this. And it doesn't matter what the real truth is. Everyone believes that it was ISIS that started it. Right. So, it's connected to ISIS. Right. It's always so, connected to ISIS. Right. Let's, and not, it, let's not forget who started, who trained, fund, and arms ISIS. Oh, that would be the CIA. <laughs> <laughs> Funded by the United States government. Yes. Under Obama. Under Obama. That Nobel Peace Prize winning president. <laughs> <laughs> also, here's the other thing about the Wall Street Journal, just to, to slam its credibility even more. I mean, most people don't realize Rupert Murdoch owns it now. Rupert Murdoch being the guy who owns Fox News. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's just it, it, so the, the moral of the story or the point of the story is 
don't believe anything you that you read and only believe half of what you see. That's right. Oh, my goodness. It used to be don't believe anything you hear and only half of what you what you read. Now it's like don't believe anything you read and then in parentheses in the mainstream media. Well, you got a censored blogosphere, too. I mean, I catch Zero Hedge making exaggerations and incorrect statements all the time. All you the just, time. And a lot of people just pull up Zero Edge and they read down the headlines and that's that's what they think is the news. And it's like a lot of their headlines are sensationalistic for the purpose of getting hits. You know, have people pull up the article and then ads pop up. And then when you read through the article itself, it's like, oh, well, this is a little bit different than what the headline suggested. Yeah, or like what... what we exposed a couple of weeks ago with the situation with Deutsche Bank, X, X Terra, whatever, extra gold. Yeah, Zetra Gold. Zetra, right. Zetra Gold. That's right. Same thing. It turns out Deutsche Bank really didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> they were just doing what they were supposed to do. Yeah, they were. Whether just... or not they were, you could say that they were ethical or moral for participating in that scheme, that's a whole different matter. But in terms of, the legality of, of their role and what, what went on there or what goes on there, they didn't do anything wrong. And I hate, believe me, it, it pains me to defend them. And I'm not really defending them. I'm just saying that's that's the way it is. <laughs> right. That's the way the prospectus reads. That's the way it was designed. It was designed to say, hey, if you're stupid enough to give us money and think that you're going to have physical gold, well, then you're really stupid. <laughs> you're bad. Yeah, you're bad. <laughs> you're bad. Exactly. <laughs> hey, we, we tell you right in the prospectus, this, this whole scheme is designed for everyone who participates in it on our end to make money. <laughs> and, not, and none for you. <laughs> and, you know, it, it, that the, the security might index the price of gold, but it might not. <laughs> it just depends on how they feel. Look, for being honest, we laid it out there. You didn't read the perspective. You're bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, uh, well. Well, I think we found our topic. Yeah, there, there it is. <laughs> we were kind of stumbling around there before we started recording. The, what we're gonna, where are we going to go with this thing today? So, Real quickly, I just wanted to circle back to the comments I had made about uh, Apple Sp- last week and in, in the reports about their iPhone 7 Plus selling out. As it turns out, J.P. Morgan issued a research report this morning and they said, hold the phone on on the reports about Apple's new iPhone selling like hotcakes. They said, yeah, the carriers may have ordered a lot, but that doesn't mean that they're going out the door on the other end. Yeah, because T-Mobile uh, phone service is actually, if you sign up as a new customer, they will give you an Apple i7 or whatever it is, Apple 7, whatever, you know, they'll give you one. So much for that six ninety nine price tag. <laughs> Good luck with getting that. It's, it's, it's incredible. Which, and, that, and that just puts an ex- exclamation point on, on our whole conversation. That's right. I guess we'll pick it up Thursday, Dave, and see where we stand. Yeah, that's not, well, that'll be right after the FOMC meeting. Yeah. Or should I say the FOMC Circus Show? Circus Show. The next batch of lies and uh, nonsense coming out of the mouths of of idiots at the Fed. Or or as CNBC and Fox Business would say, the most important FOMC meeting ever. (laughs) I love (laughs) how it's live. It's going to be a live meeting. meeting. Yeah, it's a live meeting. (laughs) This one's live. (laughs) We're going to talk about interest rates, so it's live. (laughs) Doesn't mean we're going to hike them like we've been threatening for the last three weeks. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Do you think that they'll? Do you think that they're going to be able to pull off an interest rate hike? By I mean, they can by the end of the year, just like they did last year. I mean, they waited and waited and waited and waited, and then December fifteenth, I believe it was they. They raised uh, interest rates by that 0.25% or 25 basis points. I think it depends on what their objective is. I don't, no one really knows what their objective is anymore. I, I, I think if they want to go by the economic data, I think they could they'd probably be more justified printing more money by the end of the year. Not, not that that's the right policy, but. Who knows if they're going to raise? I, I want them to raise rates because I, you know, I need to. I want to see the market sell off a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and let's let's see how well they're 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 saying the economy is really strong right now and it's it's doing well. Well, let's see how let's see how well it withstands another twenty five basis point interest rate hike. 
No, let's go for the glory. Let's raise it a full point. That'll never happen. <laughs> well, we'll I mean, if, hey, 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 if we got green shoots going on everywhere and we've got an economy that's robust and, you know, kicking along at one and a half to two percent GDP, then why not? Oh, that's right, because one and a half to two percent GDP is is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pick it up uh, on Thursday, Dave, and see where we stand. Yep, that sounds good. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you then. Catch you later.